Sponsored by Brilliant. Get smarter every day and save 20%. Link in the description. Apple Card, no, not that one. The modern one, Apple has partnered with Goldman Sachs and MasterCard to roll out to iPhone owners in the US. It's been available to Apple employees to test out for a few months, invitation only to customers for the last few weeks, and now has gone wide for everyone. Since I'm in Canada, I can't have one, at least not yet. But iMore's managing editor, Lori Gill, sure can and sure has. So hit subscribe, tap that bell gizmo so you don't miss the next video, and then let's get to her review. I'm Renee Ritchie, and this is Vector. <laughs> oh, what's so that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, savage. So I guess first things first, what's the sign up process uh, like? What's like, what's it like to go through to apply for it and to get it? So I've mentioned this before. It's incredibly easy, almost to the point of being too easy. It's like drunk dialing your ex. You might just decide to sign up for Apple Card in the middle of the night after you've had a few beers because it's that easy. It's, Screw it, just I'm getting an Apple Card. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, what did I do? <laughs> so you just open the wallet app and you add, you click the button or tap the button to add a new card. And then once you're there, one of the options is to add Apple Card. So then you tap on add Apple Card and that's where you begin the application process. If you already have your contact information in set, uh, set up with your Apple ID, it'll automatically populate your, your name and your phone number and your address and your email. So you just click next because it's already filled out. It'll ask you for your social security number and your annual income. And then depending on whether or not you need to add any extra information, it might ask you for your photo ID or some additional information. But if it doesn't need anything else, after you enter the annual income, bam, you're in. And then you, it took me 30 seconds to get my offer. And then the offer is presented to you with your annual percentage rate and your, um, the, uh, the amount, the total amount that they're going to offer you the credit line. And then if you like it, you accept it. If you don't like it, you don't accept it. Nobody's feelings are hurt and your credit score doesn't get affected. <laughs> but it is incredibly easy to get into. And it sounds like they're being really aggressive with the amount of, of credit scores that they're accepting. Yeah, I think um, the term is used uh, subprime lending. And I, 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 I think that this can be a bad connotation in some regards. And I've, I've had people um, uh, talk to me on Twitter saying, you know, it's a bad idea to be giving credit out to people who have bad credit. But I feel that this is actually a great way for people who have previously had bad credit or don't have any credit credit to change their ways and get better and rebuild their credit or for people who have no credit at all to have a, the opportunity to get credit. And what do you, I know it's anecdotal at this point, but what are you seeing in terms of interest rates? The, the early buzz was that it could go down as low as possible, but are, are you seeing that or are you seeing more of a spread? So I think what went wrong was when Apple presented this, this idea to us that, the, that they're going to have this card. One of the things they said was, And our goal with Apple Card is to provide each customer with an interest rate that is among the lowest in the industry. So we all immediately thought, oh, we're all going to hook into this 13% interest rate. That's fantastic. That's not actually what really is going on. The 13% for this type of card, that is low. That's very low. But not very many people are going to get that. What is on the average that I'm seeing um, is more common is the 17.99. That's about average for a credit card like this within this category. That's right. I, my, I have two other credit cards that have, I think it's like 17.24. So it's pretty much the exact same thing. So what is it like to actually use it both online with Apple Pay and that big hunk of titanium in real life? <laughs> yeah, no plastic here. So when you make a purchase online, it's it works the same exact way as Apple cards, uh, Apple Pay. So where, wherever Apple Pay is accepted, there you go. You just hit your little, you know, buy now button and you either use your phone or your watch or if you're on a Mac with a touch ID, you, you know, press that finger down and you got it, bam, just like that. Um, if you want to make an online purchase somewhere that does not accept Apple Pay, a great thing is that um, your Apple Card can be automatically put into Safari Autofill. And then even for places where uh, they don't accept Apple Pay, you can still use your Apple Card anywhere credit cards are offered. So whether they accept Apple Pay or not, you can go ahead and use it. Um, paying in person, same thing, Apple Card, you just walk right up to your terminal, you double press, bam, you've got your payment. And something I noticed, my Apple Card processes so much faster than any of my other bank cards or credit cards that I think it hasn't gone through. It happens immediately as soon as I double click in it and it registers my face ID, bam, it's already there. And then I'm standing there waiting 
<laughs> oh wait, it's already done. It happens so fast because it's all right there. Now, some people are worried there's no number on the card, but that's what you're talking about with the autofill, right? Exactly. Well, it, you, your Apple Card has a designated device number and a designated account number. So the account okay. number is what goes into um, Safari. So it doesn't change. It's not a unique number for each website. Right. That That's the encryption that happens on the back end. The card number that you present to a website or, or a um, you know, in person, that's the same number every time. And if that's compromised, you can basically hit a button and generate a new one of those without having to change your card. Yes, and something that it it is the same process as if you lose a regular credit card. So you're gonna have to change that card number everywhere that you have to do it. So don't go willy nilly changing your number. But what I like about it is that my card, I don't have to replace my card. It's there, it's with me, it's in my hand. I don't know how fast the process is, but I have had to replace a re credit card in the yeah, past. Yeah, it's horrible. And I, and I believe that the um, changeover of the account number is instant so that you don't have to wait to be able to use it again. It's just there and you don't need a new card. So what about using the, the physical card? It, it's, it's, got a, it's got a magnetic strip on it. It's got uh, the chip on it. Does it have tap to pay on it? What are, the, what are your modalities there? So uh, it does have the chip on it, which I actually haven't used that yet because if, it, if I'm at a terminal that has the tap to pay, I just use my, my yeah. phone to do it. But I did notice that swiping you can feel it. It's like scraping metal on metal. It's not as um, nice as you might expect it. You know, when you swipe your credit card, your plastic card, you don't even notice it. But when you swipe through with that metal, you can feel like a like a rough feeling of it going through. I, th I originally thought it was going to be like polished metal titanium and I was super psyched. But when we've seen it now, it's it's sort of a white color. And I wasn't sure why I asked around because maybe that's better. And, I, and some people did say there there's reasons, including you don't want it to react with any other substances that touch it or that it's more it's a more inert material or that it's better contrast for the card or that it's just you know apple white uh, but apple's got a support article up talking about how to care <laughs> and maintain it which I, I laughed at at first but then i looked at the current cards in my wallet and they're all like all the plastic is coming off of them they're all gangly around the edges and and it feels like a missed opportunity to make something better to make something more resilient uh, and instead it ends up being fragile in its own way yeah, can, can we talk about this for a moment? Because it's interesting and absolutely hilarious because there's nobody, no credit card company has ever said, here's how to keep your credit card clean. Nobody's <laughs> ever said that. We stick them in our wallet. They get gunk all over them. They get dirty. They get gross. It just happens. And there is a little bit of controversy on the two places that you would normally put your Apple card, which is in a leather wallet or in a pair of blue jeans or, or any color jeans, those are two materials that they're suggesting that you don't use with it. Yeah, and you can request a new physical card at no charge at any time, but hopefully before people get around to wanting to change any discolored or frayed cards, Apple has iterated on the process and they do become uh, tougher and longer lasting. But honestly, don't worry about it. It's just a credit card. So what are we talking about in terms of rewards? It's 1% for everything, 2% for Apple Pay, 3% for Apple. And yeah, so to clarify, it's not 1% for everything. It's 1% for everything that is not Apple Pay. <laughs> so if, if you're using Apple Pay, it's always 2% for everything. And the 1% is for when you either have to use just the account number, in other words, they don't take Apple Pay, or the physical credit card. Um, so... Most of the time, you're going to get 2% cash back. And the 3% for Apple purchases, that includes all of Apple services. So your Apple Music, your iCloud account, your, your um, Apple Care, all of that. Any, anything that you subscribe with Apple, that's all covered. Even my Shutter TV that I pay through Apple, that's all on Apple Card. So you're with, you could not spend a dime on anything but your Apple services and get your 3% cash back. Uh, uh, quite a bit each month on if you depending on how many things you have. So that's a huge bonus right there. It's not just when you go buy an iPhone, it's all of your services too. And of course, coming up this fall, we're gonna have a couple more reasons to use the Apple card for services. So that's kind of kind of a big deal. It doesn't end after a year. You don't have to meet a minimum or a maximum. It's always there forever for all time. And number two, there's no annual fee. So there might be credit cards out there that offer a higher cashback reward, but they'll charge you an annual fee for it. So no annual fee and one, two or 3% across the board for anything. As a surprise when it went wide, also Uber and Uber Eats. Is that enough for you? Are you hoping that we see more? 
I would love to see more or companies jump on the 3% bandwagon here. I don't know that this will happen, but if Uber sees a huge influx in people using that service again, that might sort of send the signal to some of the other companies. We should do that too. Anywhere that accepts Apple Pay could potentially accept that or offer that 3%. So yeah, it would be really great to see that in the future. It's not limited by anything. If you, you know, if you can go to your Safeway and you get 3% on your groceries, that'd be pretty yeah. darn good. <laughs> you can't use it at Costco because they're a visa only house, but I would love for like Starbucks and Lego and places like that to accept right, it. Right, yeah. Managing it, paying it, tracking it, the coaching information on the iPhone, how's all of that working? It's working really well in terms of complete transparency. My favorite thing about the Apple Card feature in the wallet app, I'm not exactly sure how to word this. I think I'm gonna just ca start calling it the Apple Card app, even though it's inside the wallet app. So the Apple Card app, my favorite feature is the ability to pay. Now I know I can go online or from my phone and make a payment on my credit card anytime I want to, but it's so immediate and in my face and they're just two taps of a button and I've paid. So every day I'll make a payment here, I'll make a payment there. There, I get no, you've been making too many payments this month or anything like that. And with my regular, with my other credit cards, it's a monthly thing. I build up, I build up, I build up, I go, oh no, and I pay off. With this, I can pay <laughs> off anytime I want. Yeah, with Apple Card, I can pay anytime I want. Maybe I'll wait a couple of days. Last night, I made a payment while I was at band practice singing a song. I purposefully lifted up my phone and paid a, a bill. It, it just came to me and I paid for it right away. So that is to me the absolute best feature of the Apple Card app. Activity tracking, it's good. So transaction by transaction, that information is incredible. I woke up this morning and got a notification on my phone that an Apple Card purchase had gone through. And I thought, well, that was 1 o'clock in the morning. I didn't go out and buy anything at 1 o'clock in the morning. What was that for? It was for an app that I had purchased that it had, the just transaction hadn't gone through yet. I was able to very easily track down what that was. And in many circumstances, there's even a map and a picture. So it uses information for, from the location to present to you where you were when you bought it or, or what the store was if you bought it online and where it's located so that it's much easier to understand where you spent your money. And if you see something that's wrong, there's a button right there that says, you know, there's, is there something wrong with this transaction? And the color codes look cool because you could say, oh my God, I'm spending so much money on food. <laughs> right. But, and here's the problem that I have with it. I love the color coding. I think it's really fun. And I did do a double check and for, um, Colorblind um, users, you can when you adjust your colorblind um, ratio on your phone, it changes those colors too, which is kind of fun. Yeah, so just so you know, that's in there. Um, I have a problem with the categorization and my inability to change that. I want to be able to customize where what those what those are. So for the most part, yes, if I go to Safeway and I buy groceries, that's groceries. But sometimes I go to Safeway and I buy my prescription, and I don't want my budget to to be off off because of the purchases that I make in locations when I'm not actually make, buying those things, I'm buying something else. I think there was somebody on Twitter who said, you know, I bought some, some snacks at the gas station and now it shows that I have this gas purchase. And we can't change that. We can't go in and adjust that. We can't add new categorizations or anything like that that's off the table. Now, presumably, once it's been out in the wild and we you know, give them their feedback, they're going to change this a little or give us some customizations or at least allow us to change the category of where even though it was you know, bought at the grocery or at the gas station, it's not gas. I'm almost positive they'll do this because they're just going to see how important it is for us to be able to maintain our budgets and understand our finances better. Yeah, there's two other things I've seen in terms of complaints. One is that you can't get spousal or partner or family cards or any other card holders. Again, this is another thing that out of the gate, it, it's it's not there. But I think that Apple's going to hear our feedback and they're going to say, okay, we're going to make it so that you can have an authorized user on that, so that you can allow your kid who's who's in college to use an Apple card so that your spouse can use an Apple card. That That's logical to do that. And I think that, you know, this was step one. It's not beta because it's definitely fleshed out, but I think this is, you know, version... It's 1.0. Yeah, it's a version 1.0 <laughs> of something that's going to get a lot better. The other one was that they can't integrate it with other tools like Mint, uh, or I guess do some sorts of some sort of financial management software involvement. Yeah, yeah. Um, you need a budget is actually one of the most popular budgeting apps. I use Mint, and it is definitely 
you can't mess that up. You, you can't just not put a credit card in there. These things like they're very maintained and very meticulous and helping you budget and helping you, you know, save money to buy something. So leaving Apple card out of that picture really does like leave a hole in your ability to budget. Yeah. Now, a lot of, there's a lot of people out there who don't need it. They don't care. They don't do that. But the, this is something I think should be an option. And the last one, of course, is that you still have to have an iOS device, ideally an iPhone, an iPad, but it's not available on the Mac yet. And it's not available on the web yet. And that kind of reminds me of when Apple Pay launched, where you it was just on the iPhones and it wasn't until Touch ID came to the iPad and then eventually directly on the Mac. And it just seems like Apple puts things on the iPhone and then slowly rolls them out to other devices. I think it would be really great for them, and I hope they do this in the future, is have a web portal so that we can manage our yeah. Apple card if something were to happen to our phone. Um, or, or, you know, if, if the only thing we have is an iPhone and we don't have a tablet or another way to access our account, um, I think that this could be really uh, pa a painful experience for people. And I know that Apple doesn't want people to have, does, Apple would prefer that we don't have a painful experience when it comes to losing our phone or losing our card, our, our uh, Apple card or something like that. So hopefully they'll add that in the future. Yeah, because some people on the internet, you know, I love, I love my fellow tech um, media people, and I love my fellow Twitter nerds, but there's immediately all this talk about a lock-in, and I just, I want to remind them that we don't represent most people. We're a very nerdy clique of people, and some people are saying, don't get an Apple card, because if you ever switch away from the iPhone, you won't be able to use it, and if you cancel it, it'll affect your credit rating, and but the vast, more than 9 out of 10 people never switch away from the iPhone, and I think the people who do are the tech nerds who switch all the time. The way it strikes me is that this whole thing is a about Apple getting into financial services the way the Apple Watch was getting into health services. And it's meant, again, for a way for Apple to take their customers who have proven to be very valuable customers who are willing to spend a lot of money compared to some other customer pools and sort of offer them better experiences and at the same time offer companies like um, MasterCard and Uber access to those very good customers. And that's it is a lock-in, but it's also a value add at the same time. It's like you're both getting something out of the equation. Right. So this idea of lock-in, uh, I didn't hesitate for a moment to to apply for Apple Card under this sort of what if someday I won't have an iPhone thing because I don't ever see myself not having an iPhone. So yeah, if you are worried that you won't want to stay in the Apple ecosystem with an iPhone, yeah, that's something to consider. Absolutely. It is just a credit card. So, you know, you're not, um, you know, adopting a child. <laughs> you're just, it's just a credit card. So if, if, if that's something you're afraid of, don't get an Apple card. Done. So uh, people who use Mint, people who require um, cards for other individuals, people who are worried they will be leaving the Apple ecosystem. Is there anyone else who you wouldn't recommend an Apple card to? Um, people who don't they can't really take on extra debt. It, it, it's very important. You know, we're so excited. Apple's got a new thing, a new service, and it's called a credit card. Here's the thing. It is a credit card. If you don't feel comfortable adding debt to your life, don't do it. It's not going to do you any good just to say, I've got an Apple card. Now wait until you're ready and you feel responsible and you feel that you can take on that debt burden. All right, and last question. So who would you recommend the Apple Card for? Uh, people who love iPhone and always uh, are always on iPhone um, because, you know, it's it's a great thing to have. Uh, people, obviously, who can handle that debt burden, but wanting to build more credit or expand on their credit. You know, um, I, I might have mentioned this before. My um, credit score went up one point right after I got Apple Card. So my credit score improved by having Apple Card. So <laughs> that's kind of neat. I mean, that's no one's their experience is going to be different for everyone. But I, I was surprised to see that happen. It was the, the next day my credit score went up a point. So that was cool. You can find Lori Gill on Twitter at Appaholic, on MacBreak Weekly, and every day on iMore.com. And if you want to write cool code like in the Wallet app, check out Brilliant. Brilliant is a problem-solving website and app with a hands-on approach. It offers over 50 interactive courses, and one of the latest is Differential Equations 2. It explores real-world applications involving advanced differential equations. When the parameters of the Lorentz system are chosen just right, all solutions are attracted towards a very strange-looking set that's neither an equilibrium nor a cycle. Effective learning is about problem solving and Brilliant will help you learn and get practice and you'll come away better at solving problems. To support Vector and get unlimited access to Brilliant's courses and daily challenges, head on over to brilliant.org vector and get 20% off their annual 
premium subscription. Thanks, Brilliant, and thanks to all of you for supporting the show. So, that's the Apple Card. Super easy to add, as long as you're in the US. Wide range of acceptances and interest rates. Easy to manage with innovative and transparent reporting tools, as long as you have an iPhone, and a tight titanium card, as long as you're okay with white. It still needs support for multiple cards on the same account, for the Mac and the web. Integration with services like Mint, more 3% cashback partners like Uber and Uber Eats, and for other countries. But it's a fairly phenomenal next step for Apple's financial services business and a really convenient cutting edge card for Apple customers. But hit like if you do, hit subscribe and share this channel with a friend if you haven't already, and then hit up the comments and let me know what do you think about Apple Card, at least so far. Thanks for watching and see you next video.